welcome back to the channel everyone i want to start off by saying a huge thank you to everybody that's watching that video supporting commenting sharing subscribing and especially to our patreons we can't do this without your guys' support so huge thank you to everybody uh, i also want to thank a couple extra people in this uh, video because this video wouldn't be possible without a couple more so not only do I want to thank all everybody that's watching this and supporting the channel, but I also want to thank Sean from We Like Shooting. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I, ha I do have a second shooter that's going out with me. It's Sean from We Like Shooting. They have their own YouTube channel and podcasts and stuff. And it's just a huge help because, number one, it helps me validate the data that I'm already doing. Um, so we're using different barrel. We're using different guns. So it's helping validate if six millimeter arc is worth its salt but it also helps me because we're splitting the cost this gets expensive he's helping uh, offset the cost of that and we're kind of developing this if we go and seeing if either one of us like it so sean special thanks to you and then also a special thanks to johnny's reloading bench it's a youtube channel so let's get into this if you're watching this video then you're wanting to see how the six millimeter arc is developing I'll start off with everything that I'm doing. This is going to be kind of more of a, a long video and a lot of number, a lot of explaining stuff, but it really helped me out. I'm hoping it can help somebody else out. So I'm completely new to reloading. I've never done it in my life. Jason is the guy in Thin Line Defense Co. that, that reloads. I uh, tested the water a little bit in 224 Valkyrie. I'm kind of just going off of known practices. With 6mm arc, I wanted to give this round the best shot that it had. So I started doing a lot of research. And that's when I ran across Johnny's Reloading Bench YouTube channel. Uh, he has three videos up on 6mm arc. And they were absolutely phenomenal. So we're going to go through some number. I'm going to go through everything. I'm going to break everything out for you started out with six millimeter arc max brass length at 1.490 they say the max overall length at 2.260 so i'm going to start where i started off with this actual rifle i'm going to give you number for this rifle and for sean so i'm running a shaw barrel uh 22 22 inch sean running a ballistic advantage 20 inch barrel so we actually went out and bought the depth gauge where we can measure our actual chamber, where the projectile comes into contact with the lands and the grooves. For my chamber, I had a max overall length of 2.272, and my ogive was at 1.702. Now, the ogive, a much more important number than the overall length, but I ended up shoulder bumping it down using the, the 350 Bravo from the SAMI spec, um, bumping it down to 1.187. The, the most important number in this is the Ogive. So it's 1.702 for this particular chamber. Now, just because you're running a Shaw barrel doesn't mean that your numbers are gonna be the same. You're gonna have to invest in the tools. We bought three different tools. We bought the depth gauge tool from Hornady. We bought the Ogive tools from Hornady to measure Ogive. And then we bought the tools to measure shoulder bump just because we want our brass to last longer. Okay, so those are the number of my chamber. If you saw the last video, the Hornady Black shot better out of this gun than the Hornady Match, and that didn't really make sense to me. On average, I took the averages of everything, right? So the Hornady Black overall length, 2.2 inches, so way below the 2.26. I was at 2.272, uh, Hornady Black's at 2.200. So definitely a shorter length. The Ogive, though, is at 1.697. So mine touching lands and grooves at 1.702. So if I bump that back 2,000 of an inch, I'd be at 1.70. I'll probably jump that down to 1.698, Anything around there would be acceptable. I looked at the Hornady Black and I'm like, well, that's pretty close. That's 1.697. So we jump down here to Hornady Match. And the overall length doesn't matter. The O guy had 1.701. And I was like, hmm, well, that's very interesting. Because my O guy for my chamber had 1.702. That's that's a thousandth off. Ah, like that that rounds almost touching the lands and grooves. No wonder why it wasn't shooting well. So we looked at Sean at 1.724. And we made the call right to, then and there that his gun was gonna love. The Hornady match and my gun was going to shoot well with the Hornady black. So that's where we got all the numbers and we ended up setting our rounds when we did our ladder round 
we ended up setting, I set my guy right around 1.698 to 1.699, and we set Sean's to 1.720, 1.721. That's pretty close to 1.701 where the Hornady match is already at. Those are our Ogives, and that's the number that we're basing everything off of. All right, so since we had the fancy new Chrono, the Magneto Speed V3, I know a couple people had asked on the channel if we got any numbers off of the uh, factory ammo. Hello? Who are you looking for? No, I don't have Jesse's mom's number. Wrong phone number, you pervert. We went ahead and tested out the Magneto Speed, and I got you guys some numbers. So we'll start with my barrel, the 22 inch. I only shot four rounds with the Hornady Match 108 grain. I had a minimum velocity of 262 feet per second, a maximum velocity of 2,689 feet per second. Average was 2,673. A standard deviation was 11.5. An extreme spread was 27 feet per second. To me, that's pretty phenomenal number. I know it's only four round, but we're very limited on the ammo. So now let's talk about the 20 inch barrel. This is the very first round that ever went down that barrel. The round started out in the 2576 and every single round that went through that barrel, the numbers just started to climb until we got into the 26, 2600 mark. So his high for 20 inch barrel was 2613 where my high for a 22 inch barrel with the same ammo was 2689. His low was 2557. My low was 2662. So hopefully that gives you a good idea on how the Hornady 108 grain match ammo is shooting. Now let's get into some load development real quick. Precursor. This is my load data. This is what I deem to do with my gun, with my rounds. Do not use my powder charges for your gun. Don't use it. Do your own research, go online, figure out what's safe, figure out what you're comfortable with. A couple of these are over max load. I was comfortable with that. I did my research. I know what will happen if I go too far over max load. I'm using CFE 223 with the 105 nozzlers for this load development. I started off at 27.2 and did a ladder work up going in 0.2 increments for 10 rounds. I definitely have a low spot here at 27.6 to 27.8. I have 20, 24.63 and 24.70. So there's one of one of my flat spots. I don't really like that area because I wanna be over 2,500 feet per second with a CFE 223 um, because I want this gun to reach out to a thousand yards. I don't think I'm gonna reach out to a thousand yards with those low numbers. So if we go down a little bit right here, there's another semi flat spot. It's not as good, but that's a 12 feet per second deviation right there between 28.4 and 28.6. According to Hornady, the max load for CFE 223 and 28.6. So I can work right in between there and hopefully get some really good groupings. Now Sean's barrel, a little bit different. It's a 20 inch, anywhere between 40 to 75 feet per second average difference on each round. We loaded them up exactly the same. Same round, same casing, same powder, same everything. Only difference in the length and the brand of the barrel. He did lose some feet per second. His flat spots are right around here. Here's a six with 28.2 and 28.4, which is a good flat spot. But again, we're still not over 2,500. So we can work in a load here. This was interesting to me, the 28.6. So we went from, from 0 0.4, 0 0.6 to 0.8. We went from 2495, dropped down to 2460, then dropped, jumped way up to 2545. So this could have been us. This could have been a, a lighter charge. We really took our time, but it could have been. So we're gonna kind of work, if you look right here, there's a eight feet per second spread in the higher charges. Now this is over max pressure, but there is a flat spot in there. So what we're gonna do moving forward, I'm gonna load up either three to five rounds with these charges in between. So the 28.4, and then 0.6 and then he's going to do the same thing only he's going to incorporate the 28.6 back into his to see if we can get an a more accurate number for that next time that you see that gun we're going to take that load data we're going to load it up with our our correct g guys and we're going to go from there or o guys i'm sorry so we're going to we're going to use the correct o guys we're going to go from there and then we're going to shoot for groups and see which which one of our loads groups better with the 105 nozzle Beat me up in the comments. I'm still new at this, I'm still learning, but it's definitely been fun. Let's talk about 
what what things look like. We did shoot the match out of Sean Gunn. We used it for all of this data and to sight in his rifle. And then he shot two rounds for accuracy and they were touching. Just like we thought they would with his Ogive, he, he got two round touching. So we had a little bit of ammo left. So I took four of those and sent them down range shooting for accuracy and this is what I got. As you can see, this isn't that great. And I think it's because the projectile is too close to the lands and grooves. With that being said, I kept five rounds. So what I'm gonna do next time out is I'm gonna do my load development, but I'm also gonna take the five Hornady match rounds and I'm gonna seat that round in just a little bit more to be more concise with my Ogive in this chamber. And I'm gonna fire it for accuracy and see where we're at. But like I said, if you're doing load development, you need to do it on your own. You need to figure out your own numbers and you need to figure out all of your own chamber, all of your own barrel. You have to put in the work and the money into that in order to get your, if you're gonna reload, in order to get your rifle shooting right. So next with six millimeter arc, you're gonna see uh, some load development, some more load development to see what shoots the best groups. And then you're also going to see a group of five of the match uh, set back a little bit to better fit my chamber. And I'm going to fire for accuracy and we'll see what we get. So today I'm back out at the range with the six millimeter arc and I'm shooting for groups today. I'm going to shoot four groups of five. So the first group that I'm going to shoot here is going to be the Hornady match ammo that I actually pushed the projectile in a little bit to get it better lined up with my Ogive for my rifle. Then I'm going to, based off of my ladder load and the data that I got off of that, I loaded up three groups of five with different powder loads. Full disclaimer here, anything that I do with my rifle and my load development is my choice. Do not use my stuff. This is just to show you what the cartridge and what the projectile is capable of. It is not a go-to guide on how to make your own rounds. So. Keep that in mind, don't use any of my data, develop your own data. So let's get into this. I'm just gonna have a bunch of footage right here that just shows, I mean, obviously I've shrunken it down. You get, don't need to see all of the in-between um, of my shots and stuff like that, but I'm just gonna go through with all the video and show you all of the, um, all of the hits. I set up a GoPro down on target, so hopefully I can get them lined up. Know that it's two different cameras. It might not be lined up perfectly, but you can see with each round where I hit. Finger already cold.
0.6 then. That was 0.5. Oh, that was 5? Yeah, dude, oh, you boy. see that? <laughs> no, I just see one hole. <laughs> So this is a Hornady match that I reset. That I got the O-Drive number down to match my gun. This is the first loadout, second loadout. There are five holes there. All four of these are touching and one's just slightly to the left. And then this was 1.1 grain higher. So I found my load. Now it's your turn to find yours. And that's that. So 0.48. MOA with uh, one of my custom developed loads with this is the 105 grain nozzler rounds so yeah I couldn't be happier I'm super stoked I'm glad that I changed to six millimeter arc from 224 Valkyrie I've had a lot better results with six millimeter arc I think I got my rifle and the round dialed in now it's time to load up about 10 more projectile with this grainage and see what happens a little bit further out stay tuned for the next video I should be trying. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I think I'm going to punch out to 300 and see what the group looks like at 300 and get my dope. So thanks again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing any of our videos. We really appreciate it. And we'll catch you on the next video. All right. I don't even know if that was recording.